replace the defective parts, and finally, verify your solution. Now let's put our model into the context of some floor problems. A slot mechanic takes a call for a machine malfunction. Once at the machine, and before opening the door, the technician should determine the nature of the problem. Is the problem real or due to customer or attendant misunderstanding? To answer this question, the technician needs to understand those things described earlier. That is, what are the candle signals? Are there any error or tilt codes? Or are we simply in the middle of a game? Assuming that the machine is malfunctioning, open the door and visually inspect the problem area. Familiarity with the product's internal design is a key factor at this point. In case of a coin-in malfunction, check to see if there are coins jamming the comparator. If the problem is with coin handling, that is a coin jam or a coin-in timeout, inspect the comparator and the coin path. If there are no visibly apparent causes to the problem, access the self-test functions to isolate the problem. If the actual cause of the problem is still unresolved, swapping questionable modules with known good ones will isolate the problem. Next, the problem should be resolved by part replacement or adjustment. And finally, a good technician will verify that his solution has completely fixed the problem by testing the game again in self-test mode and again through game play. Let's consider some tilt conditions and a technician's response to them. First, consider the following scene. The slot machine candle is flashing. There is a 21 code in the winner paid window. The bill validator is flashing, indicating that it is disabled. Also, if a coin was inserted, it would fall directly through to the coin tray. The new technician can check the diagnostic card for the meaning of the tilt code, 21 in this case. Now aware that the problem occurred inside the machine, the technician opens the door. He inspects the coin-in assembly for obstructions or damage. And then, noticing a loose connector to the coin-in optics, he reconnects it, checking for any unusual reason that it might again disconnect. Now, the machine can be tested, in this case, with a physical coin plate. The door is closed, and the machine returns to the idle mode, ready for customer play. Problems can also occur with the player panel, with the buttons, and switches. Here, there is no tilt code. Let's consider an example of this. First, the technician notes that the game is waiting for a spin button activation. The coin accepted light and the spin button are lit. The technician pushes the spin button and realizes that the button is non-functional. He opens the door and repairs the button or replaces the switch. Next, the technician should go to the correct input test to repeatedly check the switch function himself. In this case, input test number 16. Note the changing state of the switch, 0 to 1, and back to 0. At this point, the technician has made the repair and verified it. Solving the occasional hopper problem will also be a technician's responsibility. Our three hopper tilt codes will indicate the majority of coin-out problems. These hopper tilt codes are 1, the 3100 or extra coin paid out tilt, 2, the 3200 or coin out timeout, and 3, the 3300 code or empty hopper. We will consider an example of the 3100 code and a typical repair for it. First, the technician notes the tilt condition and the code reference. He opens the door to have access to the machine coin out area. Next, he inspects the hopper. In this case, he notes that the hopper brake spring has come loose, and he then reattaches it. To verify the solution, the hopper test is used, and several 10-coin payouts are performed. This done, the machine is ready for game play.
The 3200 code, or coin-out timeout, indicates that the coin-out optics on the hopper were blocked too long. The cause could be an obstruction, such as a piece of coin wrapper paper in the optics, or something binding the pinwheel, or even bad optics. The 3300 code is a common floor problem because it indicates an empty hopper. When the hopper is not empty, but there is a 3300 code, the technician will need to look for a jammed pinwheel. But if the pinwheel is moving freely, he needs to now consider whether it is picking up coins correctly. The real tilt codes are designated 41 through 45. The real numbers are read from left to right. For instance, a 41 code indicates that the first reel did not index correctly. With real problems, IGT's modular design is again an advantage for the technician. If a 49 code were to occur, it would indicate a disconnection between the reels. The 61 code, or CMOS RAM error, will occur whenever the game ICs, or processor board, have been changed. To clear the 61 code, hold the self-test switch in for about three seconds and release. Since we have been demonstrating with the S Plus slot, let's briefly note that the video games will clearly indicate a tilt condition with on-screen graphics. Switch problems on the video game can easily be diagnosed by bringing up the input test. The new technician should familiarize himself with the daisy-chained switch groups. We demonstrate a typical switch replacement. Note the button is non-functional. Go to self-test inputs, replace switch, and now verify your solution. Obviously, troubleshooting expertise comes with experience, but the preceding model will serve to isolate the vast majority of IGT machine problems for the beginning slot mechanic. Some of the more common problems with a real game are player panel switches, comparator malfunctions or adjustments, comparator harness wiring, coin optics needing replaced, hopper adjustments, wipers, hopper parts replacement, the knives, optics, or agitators, occasionally a hopper will need to be rebuilt, and occasionally a processor board will need to be replaced. Most of these problems also apply to the video game, but obviously the monitor would be an alternate problem. In addition to machine troubleshooting, all technicians should be familiar with the last game recall capability of IGT gaming machines. This feature can be invaluable in resolving customer disputes. The last game recall feature is located in the last pages of the statistical data mode. This mode is accessed with the jackpot reset key switch. With the real games, accessing up to the last four games is possible. Turn the jackpot reset switch three times or until a two appears in the coins played window. The spin reel switch on the player panel will illuminate. Press it once or pull the handle and the reels will spin to the positions that were already there. But now there are numbers in all three LED display windows. A two remains in the coins played window. A one has appeared on the left side of the winner paid window, and there is also a number on the right hand side of the winner paid window. This number corresponds to the stop number for that reel. Just below the winner paid window, the credits window shows a one on the left side also. This corresponds to the first of the last games played. Pressing the spin reels button a second time changes the winner paid display. There is now a two on the left side, representing the second reel, and again, a number on the right side for the reel stop. The third activation of the spin switch shows the third reel and its stop. Pushing the spin reels button again will show the number of coins played in that game, and if there were any credits. That number would be displayed in the credits window. If those credits had been cashed out, that number would appear in the winner paid window. Activating the spin reels button or handle again would change the coins play display to a two.